I bought this Evercade EXP off eBay. This is the description in the eBay listing. I only used it once when it first arrived, went to charge up yesterday, the battery doesn't want to charge up, the orange light comes on but can I get it to charge, works fine on mains power. So let's see if that's true. Power is there. Yeah, that doesn't want to come on. It's a USB-C, so I've got my USB-C ammeter, or amp meter, or amp Right, it's drawing, 0 0.78 amps. And, I mean, we've got a bit of a light there. Not much of one. Sort of a, yeah, very faint orange light. Let's see if it comes on now. No. No, it does not. Okay, let's try it without the ammeter. Oh, that's gone much brighter. That's weird, isn't it? Well, let's try it now. No. How odd that it was a different colour light. Oh, no, it's, no, it's that same brightness of light. Okay, no idea what's going on here. But it isn't turning on. So let's take it apart, see what's going on. nice and clean inside. Some remnants of what looks like thermal paste there, which is a bit weird. Um. But I was hoping to see the battery and I can't, so I think it might be under here. So let's take these boards out and see if we can get a little bit further into this. Right, there's the battery. Multimeter in voltage DC. Let's see if we've got any voltage on the battery. Yes, we do. 2.97-ish. Right, so it's it's flat, but it's not completely dead. What I'll do is I'll take this board out and we'll have a look at it under the microscope. Do a visual inspection, we might see something obvious. All right, so that's USB-C charging port. I forgot to mention, I did check this and it was absolutely fine. Just double check it under the microscope though. Yeah, looks fine on that side. And yeah, I think it's fine on that side as well. So I don't think that's the problem. So let's just have a quick look round round the board. This is obviously where the charge comes in and where the battery connector is. Yeah, there's not actually a well, there is quite a lot on this side, but I'm guessing there's more on the other side. Nothing's jumping at me there. Let's jump it over. Jump it over? What am I talking about? Right, we've got four things. <laughs> I'm going to use all the technical terminology today for you guys. Right, well, nothing's jumping out of me. Don't say jump again. Don't say jump again. So I'm just going to jump the battery. I'm just going to put the battery back in. Let's see where the voltage goes from the battery. Okay, so at this point here, that's, we should have that, that 3 volts, whatever it was. 
well, 2.87. Does that then go to there? Yes, it does. Oh, it's coming up there. 2.868. 12 millivolts. 2.8. What's coming out of that? 2.8. Okay. Let's just see if we've got any shorts in this area. No. Well, let's plug in the charger to this now with the battery connected. Let's see what voltage we've got on here now. We've got 4.2, which is presumably what the device is sending to the battery. Right, I'm going to connect up the this other board here because this is the board that has the LED on just to show whether it's charging or on. So I need that in just to so I can see what it's doing. It's possible maybe the screen is putting a fault on it, and obviously I've now disconnected the screen, so I think it's worth just popping this back in and just testing it. Okay, so we now have you can't really see it, but we've got the LED board attached, and we've still got the red light. Trust me, bro. Just trying the power button now. No, it's still staying red. I wonder if it comes on if we disconnect the battery. Let's try that. Because that's what it said in the listing. It said it doesn't work off the battery when it works plugged in. Will it turn on with the battery not connected? No. Oh, now it is. Oh. Okay, so we've got a green light. All I did there was I unplugged the charger and plugged it back in. Let's come to a red light. It's making noise. Did you hear that? So it comes on without the battery connected. Does that mean it's a faulty battery? I bought quite a few of these 3.7 volt. These are 1500 milliamp hours batteries off. I think it was Amazon. They're only cheap, but I thought they might come in useful. Same connector. So I'm just going to plug this one in. See what it does. I mean, what I will say is, it's not the right size, it won't fit in the chassis. Right, that battery's in. Let's just see if it turns on. Now, I'm not... Look, the amp meter's not on. Let's see if it turns on with just battery power. That's not the power button, Steve. That's the power button. No. Oh, it's the wrong way round. Look at that. Positive and negative are the wrong way on that battery. Oops. That wasn't good, Steve. And now I can't get it out. Always check your polarity. <laughs> what a muppet. Right, I think what I'm going to do, rather than messing about with these wires up here, I'm just going to swap these two over here on this, this little charging module. Should be easy enough to do. He says. And at this point, I will say, don't copy me. I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm doing. Batteries are dangerous. That'll do for now. All right, now let's try it. The wires are the wrong colour, but the polarity is correct. Okay, now is it going to turn on? Yes, it is. There's the light. Let's go to the diffusers. There we go. Green light. And the unit's on. So, it's a battery problem, but the battery still had 2.8 volts in it, whatever it was. So let's just see if that charges now. Yeah, it does. So in theory, I could have replaced it with this battery, but it's obviously not going to fit because the other one is wider and not as long. I'm wondering if it's a problem with the battery management module on the on the battery. Do you know what I mean? Because that's showing us having voltage in. Right, I'm going to take this out. Because it's not working as it is, so let's have a look at this battery and see if we can work out what's going on with it. I mean, in theory, all I need to do is buy a replacement of these, but if I can rescue this, why not try? I'm guessing this is going to be stuck down. <laughs> it certainly is. Let's get some isopropyl alcohol underneath that. This stuff. Already moving. Oh, the wonders of IPA. Awesome. 
we'll just dry this off. It will dry by itself because IPA will just dissolve. Oh, not dissolve, is it? What does it do? Evaporate. Jeez, my brain's not working today. I've got a bit of a cold in case you hadn't noticed. I don't normally sound <laughs> like this. Oh, maybe I do. Right. What is the problem with you? Right, so look at this module. Get it under the microscope. Right, check this out. My multimeter goes a little bit crazy. That's on continuity. That's between positive and negative. There's something not quite right with this battery, is there? So on the other side of that, we've got some chips here, a resistor, one capacitor. What's that? Is that an E or a three? Is that a fuse? Yeah, F1. See if we've got continuity through that fuse. Yes. Let's check ohms. That should be, is that 100 ohms? 99.8. What should that one be? Is that 1000 ohms? 1k. So they're all good. All right, let's check the capacitor. Right, the capacitor shorted. It's weird, it's doing like See, the beep stays on. Normally when I let go, normally the beep stops immediately, but it's staying on like like my multimeter doesn't know what to do. I need to clean this up. All right, now I can read it. DW01 and 8205A. That rings a bell. I'm guessing it's either a problem with one of the chips, more likely, or it's that little capacitor. Well, let's have a look at this other battery and see what chips we've got on this one. That's 8205A. That's the same, isn't it? 8205A. What did I say that one was? 8205A. It's just a, it's in a slightly different package. VG83. I mean, I wonder if I swapped those boards over. Whether that would be safe. Would that be safe? If you could let me know in the comments before I do it, that would be really useful, thanks. But just in case it is that capacitor, let's take that capacitor off and we'll see if the short disappears. If it does, it might just be as easy as that. This is going to be quite difficult to do. I'm going to use low melt solder. I mean, I'm not bothered if, if I lose it. I just want to get it off. Wow, that's a lot of low melt solder. Well, there it goes, and I haven't lost it yet. The problem with low melt solder is great stuff, but it just goes everywhere. Right, I think we're good. Well, let's just see if those pads are shorted. No, they're not. Well, that doesn't mean anything. It could still be coming from here. Mind you. It's only connected there and there. Do you know what? It might be that capacitor. Right, because I don't know what value that capacitor is and I'm probably not going... Where is it? Oh, I wait to see if I had a short on it. What I will say is that the, those components are extremely small and very easy to lose. And I have, in fact, lost it. Now, let's see if we can measure the, the one that's on the other board. I'm not getting a reading, that's probably because it's in circuit. And I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do, and I'm going to use hot air, and I'm just going to move it over. Don't copy me, kids. I'll let that cool down, then we'll see if we can get a reading off it. 111 nanofarad. 111 nanofarad. I'm going to write that down. There we go. <laughs> well, let's pop that back on. A little bit of flux. With a little bit of flux, we can make it through the night. If anyone wondering, this is just like tape, so it can be replaced. I've not melted any plastic, don't worry. 
Okay, so that should still be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an 111 nanofarad capacitor if I've got one. I'm going to pop it on that other board, and then we'll see if there's still a short. In theory, there shouldn't be. Right, I'm just trying to see what size this is. It looks like an 0603, is it? No. It's an 0402, isn't it? Wow. Right, I have... 100 nanofarad in 0402 and then the one after that is 220 so I'm going to go with 100 it's within 10% so it should be there or thereabouts I like to do this to show you how tiny these components are there you go, that's it on my finger admittedly my fingers are fat and massive I am just going to use a little bit of hot air again. There we go, that'll do. Right, let's see if we've got a short on that now. No. But I'm wondering if I plug this back into the board, whether that's going to reappear. So I'm going to test that. I'm not just going to be all maverick and put this whole thing back together. Who would do such a thing? Right, come on. Right, we're in. Let's now see if that short's reappeared. Not yet. Well, let's plug the charger in. 1.2 amps. We've got a light here. Is this thing going to turn on? No. Let's see if the shorts come back. No, I don't think it has. No. Let's check voltage. So the battery, look at that, 3 point, it's climbing, 3.6 and still climbing. Maybe I just need to leave it on charge for a bit, let's do that. I'll come back to this. Right, that's been charging for quite a while now, let's see what voltage we've got in this battery. Oh, it's still only 3.6. Oh. That's not going to be enough to turn it on, is it? Yes, it is. It's come on. No way. No way. I think that's all it was. I think it was that little tiny capacitor. I won't know for definite until I put this fully back together. I'll give this a good clean up. I'll put it fully back together. I won't bore you with that. <laughs> so yeah, let's put it fully back together. Give it a good clean and then we can test it properly. I'll just skip ahead to that bit, because it's rubbish. One, two, five! Freezer! Right, there we go. This thing has cleaned up perfectly. I do believe them when they said they only used it once. Look at that screen. It's immaculate. But does it work? We've got a red charging light. We're drawing 1.37 amps. Is this going to turn on? Got a green light. Come on. Oh yeah. Right, more importantly, does it stay on when we unplug this? Come on. No. No, it does not. But it turned on before. It <laughs> turned on. That could just be the battery being flat. Right, I think we're back to the original fault now. Because it came on when it was plugged in, but it didn't stay on with the battery. And now it won't turn on with the battery. So this thing must have had two faults. The original fault, and then that shorty capacitor as well. Unless, maybe it's one and the same thing. Maybe that capacitor's now shorted again. And maybe it's the chip that's at fault. 
do you know what I'm going to do? Because I can't swap that chip over. I'm going to take this apart again. Yes, I know I shouldn't have put it fully back together. <laughs> I'm going to take the board out of this battery and I'm going to put it on the other battery because it's got the same chip on it. It's a different package, so I can't take the chip off this and put it on the other one. I'm going to try swapping this board over with the original battery and then let's see what it does. Let's get this apart again. One, two, five! I'm going to take these wires off so I can reuse them because the plug is the other way around. Is this going to fit? Mm, just about, I think. I think that's good. I'll give that a bit of a clean. I'll wrap it back up in Kapton tape. Right now, I'm just going to put this back together and then I know, I know, <laughs> and then we'll see what it's doing. Right, third time lucky. Red charging light, drawing 1.46 amps. It's good. Is it going to come on? Yes, green lights. Come on. Right, it's on. Now the ultimate test. Does it stay on? Come on. Oh yeah, that is incredible. Charging symbol, take it out. We've got two bars, amazing. Let's just see if it reads again. That would have been annoying if it didn't. Let's take that out. Right. Oh, this is a side scroll. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really cool. Oops. Ha! So that's all it was. This little battery management board. Nice. Uh, I mean... Stupid battery management board.